Okay, this is a uh, Iron Man 3 review. Um, I'm going to try not to be too spoilerish, but I had huge problems with the endings right off the bat. So, you know, may, this may turn out to be just a little bit, little bit, little bit angry. I don't know. Uh, the first two Iron Man movies, the first one was fantastic. I was sitting in the theater, okay, you know, this should not be this good. It was excellent. Second movie, a little bit lower on the story quality, but still a great movie. Still liked it. So going into the third Iron Man film, knowing that this was the third Iron Man film, coming off the bootlegs of Avengers, I was like, right there, that's kind of two strikes against it, so don't have... Uh, high expectations. Okay, go in and, and take it for what it's going to be. Anyway, from what I understand, Disney had a little bit more of their fingers in this one. You know, I don't, I don't know. You know, but you could definitely tell a difference. The problem with this movie is that it was not an Iron Man movie. Should have been an Iron Man movie. I want to say that Guy Pierce, as Guy Pierce, I'm not going to spoil what he does in the movie. Excellent. Uh, ben Kingsley did the best with what he could. Tony Stark was, you know, you know, Robert Downey Jr. You know, he did what he could do, so I don't want to slam, you know, I mean, Gwyneth Paltrow even, I don't want to slam any of the actors in it. John Cheadle, if you're a Don Cheadle fan, you get to see him do a little bit of action and stuff. So, you know, they, they packed it full of, of action, and they kind of sacrificed what Iron Man was as a movie, okay? Um, came to the same conclusion that was going along. They have added camp to the movie. Not, not good. They, uh... <laughs> The, what they did with the Mandarin, the Mandarin is a fantastic villain in the comics, man. He's like one of the top five. You know, we're talking Doctor Doom, Magneto, um, Mandarin, uh, just, uh, gosh, <laughs> Thanos. Um, and then you have the Mandarin. Um, and what they did with the Mandarin, all of a sudden it turned into a Scooby-Doo movie. Um, with his, with his unmasking, if you will, trying not to spoil this too much, but basically they took the Mandarin who was this, and turned him into this. And then we see a lot of Tony doing without the armor for various reasons and stuff, right? And they, all of a sudden, the movie took this flavor where they were trying to do a James Bond movie. So they took somebody like Tony Stark, who was this, and turned him into this. And then they turned around and... A suit of armor ends up with a kid in his garage who ends up talking to Tony quite a bit and everything like that. And all of a sudden it's like, it felt like they just inserted this to have something for the kids. Like, the Iron Man suit itself is not cool as it is, you know, for a kid. As an adult, it's cool to see. You know, it's just a cool costume. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, a man or a kid. And all of a sudden it's like, it's like they're doing this like they're tapping the Iron Giant cartoon, which is a masterpiece and a classic. But that was the problem with this movie, man. It didn't feel like an Iron Man movie. You're watching this and, and it's like they have all these comics and Marvel has all you know, all these stories they can pull from and they're giving it like this this you know, trying to be like a spy, MacGyver, Scooby Doo, Iron Giant film with a little bit of camp in it. I mean it was just ridiculous. And it was what kind of movie where you're like the, it doesn't matter, but you're sitting here like, okay, guys, why don't you just call in the Avengers? If you're going, instead, Tony just lets all his Iron Man suits get decimated, and they're all about remote control. And when all the Iron Man suits show up, I'm like, okay, they're going to save the movie. No, they're just flipping around, flying around, and it's cool to see them. I mean, aesthetically, when you first see them for the shock value of the movie, now we're towards the end here without me trying to spoil it. You know, it's cool to see all that, but he's jumping from armor to armor, and they're easily getting took, you know, took away. Tony's not using his mind. And then there's a scene where Gwyneth Paltrow falls um, into what looks, I can't remember if it was magma or something down below her and stuff. And he's got all these armors around him, and he can turn around and run off of uh, bridges and stuff that are up there, you know, uh, and you know and jump into an armor but he can't get one to catch pepper and then here's here's some spoilerish things okay i'm just gonna go ahead and spoil some of the movie man pepper pots you think she's dead and she takes a while to fall while he's watching her not i don't know 30 seconds later tony gets you know runs over there and gets uh jumps into a suit of armor that's just waiting for him floating with no back on it and he does this two three times but he can't get one to catch pepper 
and then to redeem themselves for Pepper Potts being, you know, a damsel in distress here towards the end and stuff like that, she gets powers. It's kind of shook my head. Of course, she's supposed to be flipping out. Um, the Mandarin. I was alluding to the Mandarin. They turn around, and the Mandarin, like I was sitting there telling you just a minute ago, was a major, he's a major villain. Okay, he's been, in, he's messed around with the X-Men. He's caused Tony Stark some major things in the book. And it turns out that he's just like this figurehead. In, in, uh, uh, he's an actor um, assigned to be an image for a group. And, you know, he's silly. He turns out to be so silly. They Why even bother using the Mandarin? They really missed out on, on something here without a doubt. So basically what we have here is a movie that I went in with low expectations. It reminded me of other movies. It, it felt like a satire, a parody. It just it, it lost its, its soul of what made the Iron Man movies cool. I feel like everybody did the best they could. I feel like what happened was is that they tried to be politically correct. They tried to put a whole lot in there to make you feel like you got your butt because it, it is a Marvel movie. It feels like that all, you know, after following the Avengers and everything like that, they just couldn't do an Iron Man movie. They, they had to have a big climax and a big fight scene and throw more at you. And more is not always good when you've lost the substance. So, you know, I'm not going to blow up this movie. Go, go see it. Hopefully I didn't spoil too much, but I mean, you know, I, I was disappointed. Oh, I'm so disappointed.